everyone, how are you going? So, I was on a page called Let's Talk Kalgoorlie. Um, it's a closed chat group, like a community group, okay? And um, a lady came on asking about, you know, that they might be moving to Kalgoorlie for her husband's work, but they've been told good and bad things about the place, mainly about the increase in crime and stuff like that. And they were wondering whether it was worth moving to Kalgoorlie and would it be a good town to bring up kids in, all right? Because um, they're currently in Bunbury and they haven't had any issues there. Well, there's no cash or debit card in Bunbury. So <coughs> I just made a comment regarding, you know, be informed about the cash or debit card because, and then she said that she was on a DSP and she was receiving family tax payments and of course the trolls all jumped in, but and I, my attitude was I'm only informing her of what she needs to know about the cashless debit card, and um, the the trigger payments and this and that. You know that these things need to be considered when you're moving with your family. You know even if your husband is working, um, the financial divorce that's going to be required if she gets put on the card once they move and. And then having to um, ask permission to pay rent and only be allowed to do things 50-50. And all the technical things that go with when a couple's put on the card and one person is working, right, and the other person's on a payment. Oh, dear, oh, dear. So we had lots of people that um, didn't like the, the thread, obviously, because they've removed the whole thread now. Because... I. It was like they want to keep the card a dirty little secret. Shh, don't tell anybody it's here. Just let them walk into the spider's web and, and let them walk into it, which is bloody cruel. It, and like I did make one comment at one stage that says it shows how people are in regards to people with disabilities. If you're not going to warn them about a program that's here that removes their legal rights, their consumer rights, their privacy, controls their lives, blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? But no, so somebody got upset because I don't live in the area and obviously they didn't know who I was anyway. I said, well, that's not the point. I know a lot of people that do live in the area, talk to a lot of people that do live in the area that are on the card, right? Um, and this particular page was run by a gentleman who was on the card who passed away. He used to keep a pretty tight ship on this page um, regarding racism and stuff like that. But this page can get a bit racist sometimes to say the least, all right? So everybody's trying to pretty it all up about how good the services are and what sort of things. But I'm listening to people that are excluded from those things, all right? Um, some people have said there's nothing there for the kids, which is true. There's nothing there for the kids, you know, and, and things like that. If you've got three kids and you're on disability, you're going to find it tough in a regional town like that um, my personal opinion is I would never move there. There was a bloke who commented, um, he's a carer for his disabled wife. Um, he got stuck on the card just because they visited. So, um, they visited for two weeks and they did the right thing from where they came from. They signed in at Centrelink, um, because that's how it's done. When you're sort of nomadic, you've got to sign in everywhere you go. And um, they got lumped on the card for a two-week visit to go and meet, to go go and see family. You know what I mean? You know, so, yeah. Well, it obviously got too hot for them. There was too much real information. They've got one troll there called Matt Black, and he said I had my tinfoil hat on. You know what I mean? So I just gave him the link for the ter terms and conditions and said that's not mine I didn't write that I cop that up here a lot they I, I had trolls from the Liberal Party here trying to say that I made up the terms and conditions that I was showing people and it's like that's crap you know you know what I mean because they didn't want people to see the terms and conditions so obviously there's some embarrassment in that town because now they don't want to tell people that are thinking of moving to that town um, oh but if you want a Centrelink payment you could end up on the card. They don't want to warn people about that. That to me is not community spirit. If you're not going to, if you're not going to warn people what they're walking into, that's cruel. That is cruel. Because then the minute the card fails at the shopping centre for her, then you're going to denigrate her and go, Aye. you know what I mean? Yet you encourage the person to move. All right. 
yeah anyway i just thought i'd have a bit of a chat you know um about that and uh yeah sad isn't it but then again the harvey bay community forum blocked our group from posting anything about the card blocked me from being able to do it the last post i was able to get up there was the christmas parties and they blocked that from going up there you know what i mean it was up there for a little while uh, a couple of people offered to help with some stuff and then bang we were we were banned because pro card supporters right don't want community on community groups and um, it's very noticeable a lot of the community groups across the country right um are lmp leaning or one nation needing, needing ad admins do you know what i mean they're almost like they're set up deliberately because they're also it gauges public opinion they use it as a forum they'll, they'll throw out a topic and to to see what people are talking about so they can get information about how the public feels and people think it's just a community page but it can't be a true community page when you can't post things about what's going on in your community good or bad you know what i mean so we could never post stuff about the card and how it was failing and people who tried to make comments everybody got removed because shh, you can't have anybody knowing about that you know what i mean um yeah it's just disgusting so it makes it really hard when you want to do a community event and let everybody know um because they they shut down the community groups for you to be able to you know on social media to do it i mean luckily there's uh, there's others that have opened up that got sick of the censorship you know what i mean um and the bias and the one nation attitudes that was coming through in some people just got sick of it and set up their own ones that are open but Obviously, Kalgoorlie's got a bit of an embarrassment. They're a bit ashamed of their card now. So they don't want to warn people that, it, you know, if you come you could, and you're on a payment, especially after March when the caps are lifted, right, on how many people can be on the card, um, there's nothing to stop the government putting a lot more people on the card in the regions, ones that, um, for whatever reasons, didn't get caught up in the, lot, the first lot of catchments under the trials, you know what I mean? So I think after March, there's a lot of people going to be in a real sticky situation. And I don't see a problem with warning people. If you're going to move to a card area, you need informed information. You need to know what it's about. You need to know how you're going to be treated. Uh, you know, I, I posted about how you'll have to financially divorce from your husband because you'll be expected to go 50-50 with your bills and then you'll have to get permission from Indu and you'll have to also give Indu all of your husband's paperwork. Um, and he's from what one of the comments was, he's got a company, a self-employed situation. So therefore, all that information is going to be given to Indu and all that sort of thing. Um, I can remember a lady when Sue Lyons visited and when Rachel Seawood visited Kalgoorlie. And in the videos, there was a... a a couple there that had been married 43 years and the lady was crying because they'd always had joint accounts and done everything together and they'd been forced to financially divorce and she'd never had to work on my money his money they'd worked as a couple a married couple for 43 years and they'd done everything joint and all of a sudden she's got to um her 50 percent is in she's got to pay her share of the bills he's got to pay his share what a load of crap do you know what i mean she was in tears over this and i would be too i was just warning them that's all but anyway lots of defensive people in kalgoorlie all right because it hasn't been the silver bullet that they were promised it hasn't stopped the crime it hasn't stopped the uh, anti-social behavior it hasn't stopped people drinking it hasn't stopped people taking drugs right and um even though they bought in that huge amount of police for the first three months that the card was in it still hasn't changed things now they're bringing in the um alcohol ban and stuff like that it's not going to make a difference all right but yeah one of the worst on there is the guy that the family that were driving through so to speak they were visiting family for two weeks and they got put on the card in fact um he could appeal that um we've had other people that have been in that situation before because when you don't live as a resident in a region and you're only visiting 
and if you're in a situation where you have to check in with Centrelink, which a lot of First Nations people have to do, right, as requirement of their CDP requirements or whatever, um, then they're supposed to be marked down as um, temporary, as in visiting, not as a resident. And over and over again, we've heard so many where people from the communities have been coming in and they're being signed up as residents when they don't even live in Kalgoorlie and being stuck on the card. So that can be disputed. I know of people that have gotten off because I knew of six people that got done like that and they live 1,400 kilometres away and um, they got off because they weren't residents of Kalgoorlie or any of the other towns, Kilgardi, Canambla, uh, Menzies, Leonora, Laverton, any of those regions they weren't residents of you know um so i feel bad for that couple because they've got stuck there now um, imagine going for a visit and you don't even live in that town and you don't want to live in that town you're just going to visit family for two weeks and you get stuck on the card and you can't travel anymore you can't do anymore you can't go where you want anymore you know shocking so yeah, I just thought I'd let you guys know about this thread. But I mean, the thread's still there, but anything to do with the cashless debit card has been deleted. Cause, um, and it's funny because there's a, another site called Centrelink Living Frugal and tips and stuff like that. And, and they've got all these lists of rules before you enter the page. But again, that's a LNP run page. It was so obvious because the Say Yes crowd used to live on that page promoting the card. One of the rules now on there when you sign up for their questions to get into the page is no posts regarding basics card or um, cashless debit card. They won't allow anybody to talk about it. So they're going through the community pages now and shutting down people from talking about the card, uh, which is, yeah, suppression, censorship, you know what I mean? Shutting down people's free speech <laughs> and uh yeah because they the, they don't want the general public to find out the truths you know they don't like it at all so you think community groups should talk about things that are happening in the community but when it comes to the cashless debit card or what's happening to people in social security um or homelessness in the communities they won't have a bar of it because we you're not supposed to know about those things Shh, gotta keep it all secret you know what I mean? Um, yeah. Disgusting, isn't it? It's sad that locals won't no, won't warn people. Sad. It shows the calibre of the people, doesn't it? You know? Well, if you've got disability and you're raising kids and your husband's working, why would you move to a town that's not going to warn you about something that could impact your life for the rest of your life? You know? So, um, yeah. But the whole thread got removed because somebody asked me, did I live there? It's like, no. But I've got admins that live there and I've speak to plenty of people who do live there that are on the card and they tell me about the place all the time. You know what I mean? And there's no way I would go there to visit because I'm on a disability support pension and I wouldn't want to risk being put on the card. I, I put, you know, I got my daughter out and I got myself out because I couldn't live on the card. I couldn't imagine living like this. Do you know what I mean? It's just not right and um and if my daughter and i had stayed in harvey bay my daughter would have been on the card now she had a job at the time it wouldn't have made any difference to her but it would have done a lot of damage to her mental health no i wasn't going to have her have them do that to her and she would have missed out on getting the diploma that she's got now and doing the courses that she's doing at the moment and and yeah and being where she is at the moment she would have missed out on all of that um because she would have been trapped in Harvey Bay, still working at Kmart probably, getting 12 hours a week because that's all they'll give them, or less, because, you know, it was noticeable once my daughter turned 16, 17 type thing, 16 or so, her hours dropped for the 13-year-olds that they were employing. So Margaret says here, why do the First Nations people have to tell social services when they move about an area? So when they're on the CDC, CDP program, which is their their employment work for the doll and it runs for 48 weeks of the year so in order for them to go visiting another region 
uh, for ceremony or for medical whatever, they have to get permission from their Centrelink uh, to let them know when they're going. And then they have to sign in at the Centrelink in the town that they arrive at, right? And that's how people in Kalgoorlie got stuck on the card that didn't live in Kalgoorlie, uh, was people, and, it's, and it started with six people, and we alerted, I, I spoke to a guy in India, and he, and he was like, no, that's not right. These people are supposed to be marked as temporary visitors, not residents, only residents. But the number grew to 40, and then I got word that it was 150 from the local communities that had been trapped onto it. And it could be more than that. Bear in mind that the mayor, um, Bowler, and the local members, they're blaming the outer lying communities that are not on the card for coming into Kalgoorlie for medical or whatever. Bear in mind they can only get, the government only gives them bus fare or bus ticket for one way into town. So when if they've got to come into town for medical or whatever, they get the bus in. Then they've got to wait until they get paid next before they can get the bus back out, right? Um, so they sleep on the streets, a lot of them, because they've got nowhere to go while they've got to wait. And the buses don't run every day, you know what I mean? <laughs> so they've got to wait until they get paid next before they can buy another bus ticket to get back out to their communities. Um, and that causes problems because they're hanging around town. But to blame all of the social um, upheaval on those people is wrong, all right? Um, Look at what you've done to your own town. You've excluded three and a half thousand people down there. You know? Um, yeah, and a lot of the First Nations people don't have internet. They have a lot of problems with the card. They never get them fixed. I've spoken to people, older people on the card in places like Leonora, don't understand when there's money missing from their card or how to get it fixed. And when they do finally get through to somebody, oh, well, what do you want me to do about it? We can't do anything about it, you know. Um, and that's, well, we've heard similar stories from Seduna with First Nations people having money missing on a regular basis and no one would do anything about it. So Margaret says, is the government going to increase councillors to assist cardholders with stress and anxiety? No, they haven't put any mental, they haven't really put in any wraparound services um, in any of the regions, really, to deal with the stress of losing your autonomy and helping people in that respect. Um, in fact, you know, they don't seem concerned about the mental health impacts. Their, their motto is more a, a case of, like they told us at the DSS meetings, you'll, get, you'll just have to learn to live a different way. And the expectation that those on the card will over a period of time will learn to accept living that way right um and that's what they're relying on is the longer it goes on people give up and they just learn to accept it you know what i mean um but no there's this so-called talk of wraparound services for the hinkler region there was no extra services funded i haven't seen anything funded extra in the way of mental health support or drug rehab or anything like that um i have seen where half the money was spent on four new staff for two indu workers in in uh, bundaberg and two in harvey bay uh good money if you could get it, it was around about hundred and twenty three thousand dollar contract for each employee but other than that um i haven't really heard of anything um yeah you know Seduna had a lot of money thrown at it, pork barrelling, but they're not getting any help down there. Um, and there's nowhere for people to turn to properly. Um, and even if they do, there's no one, no one's going to listen to Indu, you know what I mean? And no one's listening at the Services Australia. They're not, they don't give a damn about if you get depressed and end up on medication or if you commit suicide. They're not, they're not... A, they just don't care. I don't honestly. They just don't care. Look, if they really were genuine about helping people that had substance abuse and addictions, then why have they stripped the funding for all of our services, mental health, right, drug and rehab, homeless services, right? Why aren't they building social housing? Why aren't they 
putting money into services instead of they're not interested in in putting any money towards any of that let alone TAFE education or anything like that right um, because they're putting money into Indu contracts for Indu to to put people on cashless debit cards I don't think they're going well hey it'll be interesting because um, Agata says do I think it'll be rolled out into the big cities wouldn't there be an uproar there's a lot of people in the cities with the card. They struggle with it because there's nowhere to go when they, when it staffs up. The Centrelink staff in the cities don't know what it is, don't know what it does. Then people have to explain about it and it gets they don't have any help. Um, it's a tough one. It was, oh, yeah, they haven't been going to go near the cities yet. But, I mean, Hinkler region is a big region. Um, 146,000 people live up here. Um, six and a half thousand or just over six thousand people on the card up here um, Darwin it'd be interesting as of March they'll try and coerce uh, people to go from the basics card to the cashless debit card the difference with the two is the basics card is still controlled by the government and your social security protections are still in place your consumer rights and everything human rights are still in place with the cashless debit card, they're not. It's all removed. But the government wants to transition 23,000 more people onto the cashless debit card in in the Northern Territory starting in March, and they're going to use every tactic they can to try and force people to volunteer to transfer from one to the other. Both are forced income management anyway and compulsory, you know what I mean? Um, so Northern Territory starts its two-year trial of the cashless debit card so to speak um, along with Cape York in March so Darwin would be the first city that would have to deal with the cashless debit card and that's a very small city so um, don't, don't worry they're picking and choosing where they try it out first or you know yeah start starting with communities that are out of sight out of mind for the general population or so far remote that most Australians don't know where these places are. Like Kununurra, does do most people here know where Kununurra is? Go and have a look on the map on Australia, you'll get a shock where it is, do you know what I mean? And then go and look at the towns that, or the region around the goldfields of Kalgoorlie and where it is. Um, there's not a lot of people um, in um, Perth, they have trouble using the card down there. Marie Grace says some people living in Playford area in SA are receiving the card. No, they have the basics card, Marie. They don't have the cashless debit card yet. All right. However, I um, don't think that's not going to change because I suppose the next squeal will be, oh, we've transferred the people from the basics card in the Northern Territory to the cashless debit card. Um and the same with those in Cape York. So the next thing they'll probably want to try and do is transfer those on the basics card in Playford and Shepparton in Victoria, Bankstown in Sydney, uh, Logan, Gladstone, Cairns and Townsville. Oh, well, that would fall under the, the other catchment um, around the country. Um, we'll see what comes next, you know what I mean? So, yeah, it's complicated. But it's, it's sad that most of these community groups are, are more so set up by people that are data collecting or using it as forums to gauge public perspective on things. And when controversial, they keep calling it controversial, topics like the cashless debit card come up, if there's too much resistance, the post will disappear and whoever posted it will get banned so they can't post again because um, they only like posts that, um, follow their their way of thinking. So, you know, a pro-card post would stay up in that group, whereas an anti-card post would be taken away. So, oh, good luck to them. They'll work it out. We'll just keep telling people what it's about. We'll keep sharing the information, and eventually the Australian people will wake up, whether it'll be in time or not. We don't know. All you can do is keep going and relaying the information Learn about what the card is. If you're new to this page, read the pinned post at the top and click on where it says see more and you'll see 
everything there in those comments all those articles but you can also then go to the website and see all the stuff that's on the website as well and that's on the pinned post at the top of this page and that gives you all of the information um, or you can go to the SN7 resources page and there's five years worth sitting there as well that you can read through um, that's why we put the pin post at the top of the page so people can educate themselves they can learn about it um, learn about everything to do with the card um, and how it works and how it impacts people and people's stories the legislation everything so anyway um, I'll leave it there and uh, I'll talk to you guys again later on and uh, I'll leave it to the Kalgoorlie locals to warn people about the cart in their region. But um, sad, isn't it? You know, uh, another lady jumped in and was defending me and was saying, well, look, um, I was only trying to inform her. You know, I think when you're moving house, you need all the information about the region you're moving to. And if that region has a cashless debit card, you're entitled to have every bit of information about it before you make the decision to move. Especially if you've got kids or you're on a payment of any kind. So, you know, and for a community group to shut that down, what does that say about them? Anyway, I'll talk to you guys later. I'm just looking, um, because somebody said here, the plan is they would like to be able to roll it out nationally on all social security payments eventually. Um, but that's still a big bite, but they want to. But I'll give you a clue. Mindaroo Gen 1 submission to the Senate. They want to go for all under 22s on youth allowance, which would put 250,000 kids on it next if they try that one. So be ready to stand up for your kids, okay? I've been saying that for five years when I first started this page. Um, and if you go into the photos section and scroll right back, way back, depending on how much Facebook's removed in its revamp, I can remember making memes about job automation and job losses and standing up for your kids against the card because that's the, who they're, they're going to target. And, yeah, Mindaroo Gen 1, which is Twiggy Forest Charity, um, and doing all the tech for this, that's their recommendations for the government next is to target... The youth all right um we need to stop it and the only way we can stop it is to educate people inform people and um and form groups like this each we've got pages in each state and wherever you are if you want to help volunteer with stuff when we need to do actions on the ground we need volunteers to be able to step up and and do stuff um you know uh we're going to need volunteers this year to do some things around the country uh, because how can we educate the people? You know, we don't have money for advertising. Murdoch Press is not going to tell the truth to anybody. So we do things like I went down to the Invasion Day rally and we had a stall and we handed out leaflets and we had shirts on and we talked to people and, yeah, that's what we did. Um, and there's other members of our Brisbane team that go out and stand outside train stations and stuff like that, handing out leaflets, talking to people. Because people need to know. Even if the card's not in your area, you need to know what they're trying to do. And it is financial apartheid. It is, it is apartheid, bottom line. So anyway, I'll leave you guys be and I'll talk to you later. See ya.